Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in a multitude of counselors, they are established. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakodash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War. Back at you again with another lesson. And this one is going to be in the titles of advice. And uh, brothers should always take heed to, which is uh, seeking advice before, you know, when it comes to certain situations. All right, now apostles teach us to grow in this truth, you know, so we become uh, men, righteous men. And we follow the, 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 the ways of the Lord with decency and in order. Okay, so depends on situations, all right, that you may go through and may need of advice from an elder, okay, from, from one of the apostles, you know, from a leader of the camp, you know, a brother, all right, in general, all right. Because um, as we read here, Proverbs 15, 22, it says, without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but the multitude of counselors, they are established, okay? So without counselors, matter of fact, let's go into the word counsel, which, which really counsel just means advice. So, so like you, counsel, simply means uh, counsel is advice you know an assembly of you um, in company with a brother who have the wisdom you know if you how about me I was shy the experiences having the experience you know from an elder a brother pertaining to the situation you seek advice you know in which ways and way you should go you know, what's the better decision? What is a righteous decision? First, we search the scriptures because a lot of times the answers be right there in our faces, you know, but pertaining on a situation, you know, you ask to see whether if that's the right thing to do. You know, we're all about following righteousness, you know. You know, these are the things that we want to polish ourselves in that, in that manner because the scriptures say, what manner of person are ye to be? and all holy conversation and godliness. So if we're gonna walk in godliness, we need what? Godly advice. And the scriptures are there to be that guide, okay? And you're gonna end up leaning upon your own understanding. You know, you're gonna go not in the way of counsel, okay? You're gonna uh, think that you're right in your own mind, but really, you know, you're making a stain upon the gospel and ministry of the Lord. You know, we have examples out there for those guys that know they Israelites, you know, your purpose is disappointing. Because why? You think you're in a good case when you do it, and then it comes out to be, it's a shame. You know, and then you have, you know, if you're an honest man, you will repent, you know, and, and keep moving and keep, keep pushing, you know, but, you know, it brings shame. So it says, but the multitude of counselors, they are established. When you count, when you get counsel, okay, you get the advice, it's now established. You know to to for, for it to make it right okay so let's move on i just have a few precepts here i want to get back on the trail but i want these people to get past me all right so let's go into uh let's go into the book let's go into the apocrypha okay this is uh okay this is in the book of serac Chapter 32. And 18. Alright. This is Sirach chapter 32 verse 18. It says. Um, a man of counsel. Will be considerate. But a strange and proud man. Is not daunted with fear. Even when of himself. He have done without counsel. You see. So it says a man of counsel. A man that seeks advice will be considered uh, considerate 
you know being considerate is looking out for others you know it's looking out for you know uh what you what you may look like on the outside you know you're taking advice from men that are wiser and that can show you the right way okay so you're being considerate we, we're supposed to be considerate in this truth one toward another you know not to offend one another okay it says a man of counsel will be considerate but a strange and proud man is daunted with is daunted with fear it's not daunted with fear excuse me meaning they don't have the fear they're not considerate they just do because they're proud and they think they could do whatever they want but that's not the case all right it says even when of himself if he have done without counsel do nothing without advice and when thou has once done repent not yeah you know repent not you know if you proud and you think that's what it is then do what you do all right you do what you do and we we'll, you'll see if you're justified through your how about shimmy was shy in the end okay it says go not in the way go not in the way wherein thou mayest fall and stumble not among the stones be not confident in a plain way you know so don't be so overly confident and that you got it all together man you know we're we're, we're rehearsing righteous acts you know meaning we're practicing we're training to get it right and we're striving to be perfect okay the lord gave us examples and men who've been teaching for over 30 years man and i got a whole lot more experience than us young brothers you know have we were babies when our apostles and elders came into this thing man for some of us all right for most of us okay so all we could do is just be a sponge and soak up that righteousness so now let's move on to the book of yeah we already here we read that let me go to proverbs chapter 12 verse 15 it says the way of a fool let me highlight that it says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise and that's straight to the point okay that's simple you know this is uh the book of proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14 it says where no counsel is the people fall but in the multitude of the of counselors there is safety you see so seeking advice is safety you know going out here doing your own thing you know start uh striving to start your own trend in this israelite thing of ours you know and not really uh following in the path of righteous men who already set the foundation through the spirit and power of yahweh bashmi i was shy you in danger of falling. You in danger of being destroyed. That's why Yahweh Shai said you can't climb up some other way. Okay? All right. We have the uh, truth. We have the word. So, whereas no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So, it's always safety when seeking advice with wise men. Now, you can seek advice from men that, that, that are not wise. And guess what? Taking their advice, you could be destroyed. You can be destroyed. Okay? If the Lord don't, don't spare you and show mercy. You know? So you got wicked men that's set up. And you got righteous men that are set up. That's why it's, it's, a, it's a must that we pray. Ask the Lord that God our steps in righteousness. Alright, so I'm going to get back on this trail here. And uh, let's keep it moving. Right? This is Proverbs 11, and I have precepts here. Jot it down, right? Okay. Let's go into the book of Proverbs 13 and verse 10. Let me highlight it. It says, Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well advised is wisdom. See? Only by pride cometh contention. A man that has pride, you know, he dwell in, in the vibration of contention. You know, he can't just let it go. He can't take the low. You know, he's got to, you got to have a fight. 
a war with words. Shit, sometimes it come, shit happens where it becomes a physical fight. You know, a back and forth, a tit for tat. You know, scriptures say, render evil not for evil, roughly paraphrasing. You're not supposed to be doing that. The best advice is to take the low. You know, apologize if, you know, necessary. And, 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 and keep moving. Keep pushing. Time will tell, man. All right. It says, only by pride cometh contention. But with the well advised is wisdom. Being well instructed. You know, following the rules, man. You know, that's the problem with Jake. Two thirds of our people, they're hard headed, stiff necked, and rebellious. They don't want to follow the ways of the Lord. They feel like the ways of the Lord is too plain and dull. Like there's no salt in it, no flavor. You know, they got to put some spice on it. They got to do it in this way. They got to do it in that way. You know, starting trends. You know, brew walking. You know, those things that come to my mind. It's on social media. You know, all this extra shit. When it's not necessary. You know. Just do what the Lord said to do. Okay? Be honest and true. So let's move on. Okay, here. Number 13, 10. Okay. And a lot of these is in Proverbs, which shows you wisdom. Alright? This is wisdom. Proverbs 19 and verse 20. Okay. Proverbs 19, verse 20. Hear counsel and receive instructions that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of Yahweh that shall stand. You see? So the will of man is not in your will of man. It's in the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And if you are around wise men, honest men, men who have works, which their work speaks for itself and, and experiences, okay, you are well, well instructed. Hear counsel, hear advice, and receive instructions. It's all about the instructions. We have the manuscript, which gives us the instructions, but we also have our everyday experiences and things we go through that the Lord build us up so that we teach others. Matter of fact, um, King David, and I'll leave a scripture in the post-production, King David prayed to the Lord and asked the Lord to forgive him for his sin so that he could teach others not to go off. Okay, King David, you know, is, is basically reasoning with the Lord and pleading with the Lord to forgive him so that he could teach others not to go off. You know, and that gives him what? Experience. You know, later that can teach others. You know, hear counsel and receive instructions that thou mayest be wise in thou latter end. All right. So we have to have the patience and we have to endure within the instructions and advice that's given to us, which keeps us safe. You know, that's why I'm doing this lesson because I hope that it's edifying to those of the hopeful elect to take heed. You know, brothers who are very fairly new, you know, don't do nothing without advice. Seek it. And that don't mean you got to ask for every little thing. You know, be a man. You search the scriptures. Be a man. Search the scriptures. But if something is too hard for thee, and something you haven't seen the apostles do, or the elders do here at Great Millstone, then seek advice. Don't be trying to be the new guy. Don't try to be the new guy on the block starting trends. You know, you want to lead that to the head brothers, elder brothers that are in the ministry that, that have been proven. You know, at least you fall, all right? Verse 21, there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of Yahweh that shall stand. Okay, so at the end of the day, 
it's the counsel of Yahweh. And we as prophets, men of the Lord, all right, scriptures say the Lord revealeth his secrets to his servants, the prophets. We are of that counsel, okay? Starting with the heads. We are of that counsel with the Lord, okay? Elder Apostle Tahar, you know, he gives an order. It's all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? It's all for the best interest of our well being, looking out for our well being, you know, in this ministry, in this truth. So, all right, now let me move on. Still in the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 9. It says, ornament and perfume rejoice the heart. So doeth the sweetness of a man's friend by heartly counsel. You know, you know, you may have thoughts on things that you're pursuing. But when you actually talk to the brother and uh, through the spirit, it comes up. And brother may speak on whatever it is you may pursue. And then all of a sudden, you know, you get your answer. And you know that you had what a misunderstanding in your mind. Let me read that again. Ornament and perfume rejoiceth the heart. So doeth the sweetness of a man's friend by heartly counsel. You know, how, how pleasant is that? When a brother give you sound doctrine, sound mind, man, you know, and wisdom. And that's straightforward. So let me go to the book of Proverbs 24 and 6. It says, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of the counselors there is safety. All right, that's straight, straightforward. And this is my last piece up here, and I'm going to wrap this thing up. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 15. Okay, 15. Verse 30, it says, The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. The air that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instructions despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. You see, that's music, man. He that refuseth instructions despise of his own soul here it is you have men of the lord to tell you what it is you know this this applies to all israel okay even the wicked two-thirds because they despise the instructions and the reproof which reproof is correction they, they despise the warning before the judgment he that refuseth instructions despise of his own soul but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. So let me read that again. He that refuseth instructions despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. You know, like and I said, that's music. You know, to get understanding. It makes everything complete. It makes you comforted. Alright, of knowing. And knowing what's right. And knowing what's wrong. You know, you feel good when... You done what's right. You know, you get a workout in, your body feel good. You feel clear-headed, clear-minded. How much more these scriptures? You know, when we do what's right, we feel good about ourselves. When we take the, the, the advice, let's say the righteous advice from the Lord's men, the apostles and elders here at Great Millstone, and the way we do things, and you feel comforted, man. You know, you better off in your life. You can teach your sons, teach your family the right way. You know, we all got to learn. Let me read this last verse here. The fear of Yahweh is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. You know, that's straight. The fear of Yahweh is the instructions of wisdom. So if you can't fear the Lord, you're never going to receive the instructions or the wisdom. Okay, to save your soul. 
through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Shai. It says, and before honor is humility. And that's so true. Because Apostle Paul said, if Yahweh Shai suffered, we suffer. When Yahweh Shai be glorified, we'll be glorified. And right now, we're being humiliated. Talked about, demonized. Okay? You know, people treat us like a spiritual punching bag. You know? Hey, you got some demons that make and want to make a name for themselves. They start some shit with the Israelites so they can have a platform. You know, they can get that buzz. You know, it's all about fame and lovers of ourselves today. Covetous, boasters, truth breakers, all that. All right, that wickedness. So the fear of Yahweh is the instructions of wisdom and before honor is humility. I'm thinking of one more. I'm going to grab that. This is in the book of Sirach, chapter 20. And verse 1, it says, There is a reproof that is not comely. Again, some man holdeth his tongue, and he is wise. It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. And he that confesseth his fault shall be preserved from hurt. You know? And that stops a lot of demons, you know, plaguing your mind about brothers that you might not even know. You know? thinking things that's not even true it says there is a reproof that is not comely because every correction is not going to be a confident one to where you know you're being held so gently you know comely correction can be very rough heartbreaking <laughs> you know but it's us it's up to us to be men and to bear that you know get over it Move on. Don't even keep a grudge. You know, because if you was in the wrong and you're honest about yourself, you know you was in the wrong. You know, the Lord knows you was in the wrong. Right? There is a reproof that is not comely. Again, some men hold of his tongue and he is wise. So sometimes it's not the season to be saying what you think you should be saying. You know, sometimes you could be out of season when you say certain things. That's why it's always important we have to pray and be in the spirit of the Lord, man. You know, sometimes, you know, you might want to say something, but you might be presuming. And then all of a sudden it come out the very next week, the very next day or whatever the case may be, and you'll be happy that you didn't say what you had said. You know, you had that juice in you. Sometimes when you got the juice in you, <laughs> a little bit of ya young, or some strong you know it makes a man want to speak so scriptures say there's a balance that's why scriptures are here it says some man holdeth his tongue and he is wise it is much better to reprove to correct it's always better to correct a, a brother you know a sister that's going off you know it's for your it's for your behalf it's for the love that that the lord gives his his uh he shows towards his people he show it through his prophets you know by cursing you out you know when that fiery spirit come upon a brother and he's very passionate in the camp or in his lesson and he's fiery and he's cutting with words that's the spirit of the lord is out of love you know you know you love your children when they go off you put the the rod to them you put you put the uh you know the punishment to them and uh, what's the reasons of doing that? The reasons of doing that is to correct them so that they go in the right way. You don't want to see someone you love, nephew, little cousin you might have raised, son, daughter, and you know that they're doing wrong. You don't want to see them hurt. So you correct them, you punish them, you get angry with them until they get it right. And I've learned too, you know, when you get older, you end up cherishing the times you cherish the moments of when your parents did correct you and put you on punishment. You might can't see it when you're young and when you're going through it because you got a young man's uh, a young man's thoughts of things and how you think the world's supposed to be. You know, you get angry with your parents and they tell you you can't do this, you can't do that. And they might not even give you explanation, but you're so young-minded. You get angry, can't wait till you get older, get your own place, do what you want to do. 
But when you was on punishment, when you get older and you have children of your own, or not even children, you re-reflect back and think back, you're thankful. You love your parents. You know, you know why they did it now. Why you couldn't go outside and play. Why you had to be at home on the street lights. Your pops whooped your ass. You know, you tried to talk back. You love them for that, man. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for our physical parents and double honors to our spiritual parents. Okay? Gotta take it in like that. I hope this lesson is edifying. And like I said, everything in this lesson applies to me first. All right? It's just, it was in my spirit. I had a topic on it, a few precepts. I wanted to run down while I was walking and being in the spirit and just go over them and speak. So I hope, you know, those out there who listen in, tune in, you, you are edified, man. So let's continue and I'm in it. It says, it is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. And he that confesseth his fault shall be preserved from hurt. So it's important to confess your fault so you can move on and get over it, man. You know, so you can get over it. You can move on and not dwell in that same fault year after year, month after month, week after week, day after day, hour after hour. You know, it's about moving on, growing, you know. Sometimes you don't confess your fault. You know, you think you're hiding it. The Lord knows within your heart. He knows what's going on. He knows you lied or whatever the case may be. Anyway, verse three, how good is it when thou art reproved to show repentance for so shall thou escape willful sin. See, man, that's music. How good is it when thou art reproved, when you're corrected to show repentance, when you have time to repent, you know? Because it's gonna come a time there ain't gonna be no repentance. You know, the Lord's gonna start putting niggas to death, putting them harsh whores to death. You know, it's gonna come that time. We're all headed in that time, in that direction, the spirit of the Lord, where the Lord is gonna unleash unknown creatures. All right, he's gonna release that death, the death angel. Read Jeremiah 15 and one, the Lord appointed you know, certain deaths to certain people okay well it's to be destroyed by beast destroyed by the modern day sword to be destroyed in the, the uh lake of fire all right thermonuclear fire it says how good is it when thou art reproved to show repentance for shall thou escape willful sin and that's the whole reason okay for us to come back is to get away from the willful sin we're in a rehearsing period, you know, to get it right. We're not gonna be perfect, but we're rehearsing and honestly repenting, asking the Lord to show us mercy, you know, through our sincerity. So it's all about getting away from willful sin. All right, so I hope this lesson was edifying. I know it's pretty long. I wanna give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles, and elders of Great Millstone, who who well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.